everybody. I'm David Lasso for Coin Week here in Colorado Springs, Colorado at the Early American Copper's 47th Anniversary Convention. Behind me is a room called The Happenings. It's one of the most interesting parts of the Early American Coppers group. They have rooms divided up, partitioned, where specialists in special fields of copper are talking about their individual collecting areas. It's very interesting. It's very esoteric. We're going to talk to some really interesting people. Okay, what are we looking at here? What, what group are you and what are you looking at? They have since 1855 C1, and we're trying to ascertain the top five points of the ones that are presented here. Okay. And what is interesting about the 1855 C1? Oh, I don't know that much. <laughs> Well, some of them come with a lot some more, more color than others. Right. I mean, some of the them red are, are redder than, more, than, than some red. of the others. And some of them have better rims. I mean, they, they, they're struck to where the, all the dentals on the inside show. And, and others are a little bit off-center where they don't all show. And so you're looking at aspects like this as to what you have to find attractive. Okay. I'm going to let Bill take a look at it. How about yourself? What do these examples look like to you? Are the 55s? Yeah. It's a, it's a common coin. So you get a lot of them with the, with the red. And then some, some of them will have a... Here you go. You know, what's interesting about this one? This one is a because it's uh, full red on both sides, so the 55s come with red, doesn't have a lot of spots on it. There's another the one, another one red. red. is rare for any kind of coin in an early copper, isn't it? Yeah, it tends to, this is probably the most common year to get a, to get a red coin. Yeah. How popular so this is copper collected? Very, <laughs> very popular, yeah. And how about on the half cents? Yeah, I think from watching the Missouri cabinet sale went for, what, $18 million or something. So it's uh, not a point to bring you record prices. All right, this is the John Wright Collector Society end of the world. We do the silver coins. We have half dimes, dimes, quarters, half dollars, and dollars. And we have them out. Uh, we've picked a few interesting die marriages that have varying die states in them or remarriages that we've brought out to show people that, you know, silver isn't that much different than copper. They were made at the same time, in the same place, by the same people. So they do have uh, similar characteristics. This is the one of the finest known of the die marriage. It has a very late die state with a cud on the bottom. And of course, uh, pieces like this just uh, are one in a million. Uh, what, what is a cud? A cud is an area of uh, the die that's breaking away. This is a uh, retained cud. It hasn't fully fallen away from the die yet. If it did, there would be a large mound there that has absolutely no detail in it. Um, most collectors really enjoy the late die states where they have the dies are all broken up, cracked up, and uh, everything's uh, kind of going wrong here. What is a die state and why is it interesting to a collector? Okay, well, a die starts in perfect state. It's brand new, it's nice and smooth, nothing's wrong with it, and as they use the die, the die steel that they were using at the time was very brittle. It began to crack and chip out, and that is why that uh, you can follow the progression of the die from the early or perfect die states to the late and imperfect die states, and collectors like to see that progression. How does somebody learn about this area of collecting? Well, the John Wright Collector Society is uh, a group of uh, collectors that enjoy the silver and gold coins, and uh, th they can become a member very easily. Uh, we have uh, jrcs.org on the uh, web, 
you can download a membership uh, application and send it in. And for $25 a year, you get a quarterly journal and uh, camaraderie at shows like this. <laughs> what is it like for you being drugged to one of these gatherings? <laughs> oh, it's enjoyable. You learn all about the different coins, and um, I'm fascinated with that one coin that he brought up with the dice tape and how it's so cracked and it's so very obvious. So it's very interesting. So is it true coin collecting men or sexy? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, these are 1802 C2 half cents. And what we're doing right now is some people have brought their own different um, examples that they have, some have brought more than one, and what we're doing here is people are looking at them partly to compare them and see who has the better one, and partly just to learn what they look like in different conditions. Um, just kind of, it's fun to share and look at them and fun to learn about them. So how popular is the 1802? Is it a tough date or one of the common ones? Okay. It's a very interesting date. It's not tough to get them. It's possible to get an idea. Find us known. It's maybe a VF to an egg for my life. I don't know. I agree that that is a What's good about this large set? Uh, it's a 47N26. Um, it's got several various stages of die breaks. So it um, it goes from a die state A, which has no breaks, uh, to basically a die state D has the. This would be a die state A. So what does die state mean? That term has come up a lot from each of the each of the groups. Like this one would have no breaks or cracks. This one would have no breaks or cracks on the obverse or the reverse. No. Can you pull one over and show me something with breaks? Yeah. All right. I like this one here. This is this one's a state E, which has the the die break or what we call a cut right here. Can you see that? That's a die state E. Now. This is another example of a of an early, an early die state. It's just someone else's coin. It has no breaks or cracks. It's a die state A. And then this one would be a, a terminal die state. Okay, this would have been the last the last die state before they quit using it. And it's a die state uh, G. I believe. So how difficult is it to assemble a collection of these? Um, fairly difficult. Some of the, the, there's not a die state D here, but a D is probably the rarest to me. The G, the terminal one, it took me a while to find one of those, so it's not easy to assemble a group of those for sure. It would take you quite a while. Only three. What are we looking at here? Uh, 1831 N12 comes in many different die states. The latest is called the Harpoon Whale. And we have six of uh, seven of Ted Nafsker's gem 1831 N12s here, and we're drooling on them. Can you show me that harpoon whale? Wow, now that looks like a major. What happened to the die that got occurred? Major die break. And they just kept making them. What would I've make... got like 40 of them here. What makes a die break? Use. Wears out. Cracks, the piece falls off. And why is this interesting to collectors? Boy, that's a tough question. Because <laughs> it gives you a good reason to have more than one. <laughs> so, is this a, a popular area of the early American Coppers group? Uh, die states are very popular. Very popular. And as evidenced by. Yeah. That's what everybody's comparing. That's why you get more than one together. These are all examples of the first variety of 1794. Has the head of 93. It's shell number 17. It's a, a pretty rare coin. They're an unknown in mint state condition. And here you have them running from lovely VF30s all the way down to 
very low grades, but you almost never see this many or even close to this many in one place in one time. Why are there so many varieties of this type of coin? Well, we're only talking about the second year of the mint. Uh, the mint needed to produce coinage for the fledgling United States. They made an awful lot of these in many different varieties. The heads were individually carved, the dies were carved. Not like today where you have a master hub and many copies of the same die. So you have differences in the portrait, differences in the wreath, differences in the lettering. And they just captured the fascination of collectors for many, many years. In fact, Dr. Sheldon, the man who wrote the book on large sense, said that anybody who collects coins long enough will graduate to large sense. Everyone who collects large sense long enough will move toward the early dates, and everyone who collects early dates long enough will end up with the 1794s. And here they are. Barry, you're having your picture taken. You are now. I certainly hope so. <laughs> Right on, Dave.